the the camera project that I've done. Um, oh my goodness! The le- next level camera that uh, also very heavy. So I'm actually redoing it, but much lighter, and I'm going to release those as three three D files for people to download. I felt dumb. Um, I'm making a much I, lighter version. Watching that video, I you got to the point where you're showing if the lens projecting. I'm like, where is Matt going to get a sensor big enough to put on? The- and I'm dumb. I was thinking what you were going to do was, I saw a guy twenty years ago make a camera out of a flatbed scanner, where it would. That was that was an original. That was a thought actually. I did oh, look into really? doing that, but yeah, yeah. So you can get these scanners that you can put on to roll on paper. So yeah. it's like they're really cheap, and you just hold them against the paper and roll them down, and it scans. And they work with a basically an extended CMOS sensor. Yep. And it's a single pixel um, high, but really wide. And my plan initially was to actually roll those down. The imaging plane yeah um take take off its lens so that so that the light would just literally land straight on that and uh capture that but they there's a few problems one is that they are mono so they're they're only black and white oh. because they get their color data by strobing an rgb led yep and then interpolating that as color in in software um and also the dynamic range on them is really poor like oh. really bad so I thought, oh, this this isn't going to work. So and you couldn't do video. That went, that went. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, the exactly. gentleman that yeah, I saw yeah. do this on, you know, a GeoCities site in the 90s, probably, he took a picture of a garage door opening. You know, and it was, right. like, it rotated. It was the that must have been re- interesting. Really freaky. I wish I could remember what it looked like exactly. I mean, it's yeah. so Have you long. seen those rolling shutter tests? Yeah. Where people, like, film a plane uh, rotor and... Yep, yeah, except yeah or, like, or like the is... helicopters. That's, that's pretty pretty yes. strange. Yeah, yeah. But I'm it's actually like looking a garage door is slow. Like... Too fast, almost too fast for how slow that shutter is on a. I know. Yeah. Know, <laughs> I mean, the movie. scan rate is so <laughs> slow. Because <laughs> it's actually a great example, though, to explain to people how it works. The yeah. the rolling shutter effect. Um, I'm surprised no one's actually done that in the video. I know Destin did a great video explaining rolling shutter. So, yep. But it would have been cool to use a flatbed scanner and a lens to actually explain it in better detail. Well, now that might happen. It's, it's slow. <laughs> it's like, a, like, I guess you could even like put your hand on the scanner and just scan it and move your hand at, at the same time, like side to side, and that would result in the same kind of effect. Yeah, as long as you can get, a, get it to focus. And, well, if you're close hmm. enough, it should be. Yeah, if you just put right. your hand on the on the flatbed scanner, it'll probably be okay. Yeah. Well, it'd be interesting if you aligned your your body or whatever it was moving to the the rolling shutter somehow, so then somehow you oh, and moved it with it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is a lot like those weird, you know, when you take a panoramic shot of like a dog running and they turn into a long weird dog because the algorithm doesn't. Yes, like a sausage dog, like extended yeah. sausage dog. <laughs> yeah, or the short ones that look like they just have two legs, like a little T-Rex with a dog head on yeah. them running. Yeah. They go both ways. It's yeah, fun. yeah, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> you have made a unique camera. So let's, let's, uh, that's, that's your latest video, is that, is that correct? Yes, I'm, uh, uh, released about okay. 10 days ago at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, can you so, can you just des- describe that to us a little bit? Was that a, is that a good? Yeah, I'll, I'll describe. That's like like a million process, views actually. like right off the yeah. bat. So obviously that was pretty good. Well, I'll describe the thought process behind that actually because it's it's quite um, how I came to finally build it was quite a long process. So um, as I explained in the video, old lenses can project much larger imaging circles because that was the medium back then. We didn't have uh, digital imaging sensors. We, you know, initially had wet plate cameras and then it developed, it was film, medium format, large format, things like that. And um, because of this larger projection, they had a shallower depth of field. Now, of course, this was well, something and, and, that- And when you say that, you're talking about a very large aperture, right? That's what we call it in today's terminology. Well, is that where we're- it's, it's uh, the very large aperture is, physically large aperture is the mechanism behind what makes the shallow depth of field in tandem with the projection circle. So the shallow depth of field is the effect of it all. So um, a shallow depth of field, for those who don't know, is just a really narrow plane 
of which the image is actually in focus. So it means like um, if you took a po uh, photo of me in uh, with a full phone camera with a fast lens, the background would be blurred because it has a shallower depth of field than say a smartphone, which would have to like digitally blur it, which doesn't look great sometimes. Um, so older lenses beat out um, full frame cameras because just because of the massive imaging circle and this look is completely unique but there's no way of properly capturing it so um, because obviously the image sensor would have to be just ridiculously big um, so I had this lens and I knew its imaging circle was massive and uh, what yeah, I needed to work out they wouldn't let you borrow the James Webb telescope yeah, sensor. it would be interesting, actually. I don't really know how big do that they is, have, but it's big. Yeah, yeah. Do they have proper big sensors, or do they... Like, how, they use mirrors and things, don't they? Because I don't know... They use a grid of sensors, I think, actually. I bet they do. You, you know, I, th I think a team of people that are even bigger camera nuts than you, Matt, probably probably work on that one. You can keep <laughs> telling us yeah. the story, and I'm going to find out how big Yeah, that would make my, my, my camera look a, a bit puny, I think. <laughs> But but not not to insult your camera. I, I, <laughs> well, it's okay. I apologize. It's, it's, it, it's not too too upset. It's uh, oh, <laughs> there is a picture of a gentleman looking at the sensors, examining them. They're big, but not crazy big. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, I mean, to manufacture a sensor that big, like the failure rate would be just ridiculous. I can imagine them making maybe like ten tops for a very specialist application but i don't know i don't know i don't know enough about it to be honest um but anyway i wanted a way of capturing this shallow depth of field image and um there was an old old way of doing it where people would capture full frame camera lenses with old video cameras so with this is way back before dslrs could do video and they'd call them they called them de depth of field adapters they'd just project it onto a, a small sheet of um, glass a ground glass and then capture that with the camcorder from behind and it resulted okay. in a um, approximation of what a stills or dslr image would be which as back then they couldn't do video so this was a big deal um, and then i basically just took that same concept scaled it up and then made a video about it <laughs> and that's that's basically all it, all there is to it really you you modernized a camcorder and a film camera into a you know, it's basically a stuff, glorified a depth of field adapter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's there's nothing like super new about the concept, but it's introducing it and um, using it for something new and fresh that makes it interesting for people to watch. So it's like I'm making a little educational episode of TV or something. Um, so that's how it worked as a package, a YouTube video package. Um, it's it's so, an awesome video and an awesome. Thank camera. <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to call it a camera. Whatever it is, it's amazing. Yeah, it's sort of, it's not really a camera. It's just a, you know, but it's, I think it's easy to call it a camera, really. Yeah. It's just not really a camera. <laughs> it's just people get what you mean if you say camera. But it, this is a, a massive, massive thing, though, compared to modern lenses. Is that is that uh, a yeah. correct statement? Yeah, I have the lens over here. So this is the lens itself, and um, oh, you can see me through it. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> so this <laughs> uh, this aperture is absolutely um, ginormous, and uh, wow, compared to a full frame camera lens, how heavy does that feel? Really heavy. <laughs> yeah. like, is it like, uh, a, must like be is there air in kilograms. the middle, or is it mostly glass? It's mostly glass. Yeah, there is air, but it's mostly glass. I can actually unscrew it, but. Um, oh, probably, don't do that for us. But that's, that's I don't want the, you to that's <laughs> oh well. <laughs> that's an equivalent like full frame camera lens, similar field of view. Um, only you can see its apertures, the hole there compared to the hole there. Wow, yeah, that's difference. incredible. And that's what results in the tiny depth of field, the really shallow depth of field. Um, so people have actually gotten in contact with you to try to to rent, rent this, want, this yes. device. Uh, because there's no other way of capturing an image that this can capture presently. I've had a lot of requests from people wanting to rent it, uh, the whole unit. And that's quite exciting, but I don't know what to charge <laughs> because it's uh, <laughs> it's um, uh, it's a one-off. 
Um, so yeah well i, I uh, suppose you have to charge them for the whole time you worked on it so you know maybe say <laughs> 150 pounds per hour that you've worked on the video and you know break that down we'll and, see I, i'd like know. to just see it used in like an advert tv advert um commercial or, or a film or something like i'd love to see it actually used for with like skill like skillful people behind the camera because i'm not yeah. a cinematographer um you're, and you're pretty you're pretty good i mean you're not well you know, i operate the camera you, you know what I'm you're not, doing yeah. <laughs> but i would love to see someone who's like um talented in that area actually use it f to create art so there's this guy called uh, philip bloom who i um he used to have like this blog that i used to read like, really regularly when i like this is like way back in like 2012 kind of 2010 even earlier than that actually um and i would look at this um uh, blog so often and i'd learnt i'd learnt so much about cameras from things he'd blog about and one of the things he was really into was depth of field adapters that's how i learned about them and oh, cool. i think i because he's a cinema or director of photography or cinematography he does lots of camera stuff i would love to see like what he could do with it or something you know so i might i might just like lend it out to some people and just see <laughs> see what happens yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah when i tried. saw it i thought i don't i mean i don't know if we watch any of the same people on youtube but i remember Josh Yeo putting a ridiculously big camera on a small gimbal. And I said, I wonder what kind of gimbal he'd put Matt's crazy camera on. Yeah. I wonder if there's anything strong enough for it, actually. Yeah. So for those who don't know, it's really, really heavy. Um, I'm making it lighter, but even then, it's still going to be a bit bit on the heavy big side. But uh, it is what it is. You know, this, it's unique. So yeah, I can, it's I just, amazing. You know, well, that's it's awesome. Not... It was fantastic that you got to get video. When it, I, when you yeah. got to the end of the video and you start taking video of video with the camera, I was like, oh, that is amazing. Yeah, that was worth the effort. You know, you don't know for the first five or ten minutes of the video. And then you're like, yeah. oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Now I see There's why There's no that. way to get that look. Literally. No, <clears throat> no way other than using that lens in that it's method. It's amazing. Um, so... I've had a, quite a few people get in touch wanting to rent it, uh, oh, which that's is quite interesting. interesting. Hmm. So I don't know what to charge for that though, because it's obviously yeah. a unique bit of kit and is worth a lot, even though it's part-wise not. Because the lenses, I've got two of them, <laughs> amazingly, yeah. because um, I came across, one was local, so the first one I bought was just local, um, just in a, a town adjacent. Um, and then... Uh, which is great because it's obviously incredibly rare. And then I just before I published the video, I well a month or so before I did, I just checked and and on, e on eBay there was another one. Um, it wasn't nearby, but just paid for postage. About and how much does does a lens like that end up costing? Well, it was about seventy pounds, which is about a hundred dollars. Oh. Uh, well, ninety dollars actually. That's not uh, too But I expect the price has gone up a lot since I did the video. Yeah, um, that's your fault. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's why i thought hey it's probably going to be great to get, have two of these things just yeah. in case i break one and can't finish oh, the video like, or this something. is like like <laughs> cryptocurrency you could buy 10 or 20 yeah. of the lenses before you publish the video and then you can wait till the Flip them for, pump and for dump. More. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe you could even come out with your own crypto cryptocurrency you could have the perks, <laughs> perks box or perks coin perks, co perks oh. coin <laughs> yeah yeah sounds quite good that <laughs> I'd actually, maybe there's, maybe there already is such a thing. Maybe you can get a sponsorship. Have a look. <laughs> <coughs> perk, perk coins. Perk coins. Oh, I think. Perk hmm. coin. Oh, perks coin price chart. There is a, there is, <laughs> there is a perks coin token. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Matt, I was excited to see that your camera build project is so many 3D printed parts and custom pieces and you know, stuff that somebody like me who might, well, I shouldn't say that I'm not good at something, but maybe I'm not good at measuring and cutting and, and, but I'm pretty it's, good at hitting print on my 3D printer and putting things, to, putting Legos together. Yeah. yeah, it makes things a lot easier, to be fair. And yeah. I try and avoid using 3D printed parts because I often get comments saying like, oh, you know, you, this project cost plus 
five hundred dollars for a three D printer, and sometimes people can be kind of weirdly hostile about it. So yeah, whenever so you, you know, I've, I've was discouraged from using three D printing because not everyone has a 3D printer. But this time I just went with it and no one's actually complained, so I might start using it more often. Um, but yeah, it's, it's like, oh, you could buy a, a 3D printer for 150 bucks, a cheap, cheap one, but fairly competent. Or you could buy a jigsaw, you know, electric jigsaw, and nobody's going to give you a hard yeah, time about that yeah, for yeah, yeah. 150 bucks. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, but it makes things so much easier. It, when a project is based, like built from the ground up around 3D printing, for the builder of it, it's... <laughs> it's like yep. so easy yeah. to well, put together. It's so much easier to repeat the, your success. Yeah, yeah. For yeah. someone else uh, uh, to repeat yeah. it. If... Yeah. So, um, I mean, what that's one of the things I'm doing at the moment is just a, a more easily built version of the camera project. Almost, yeah, yes. majorly, even more like 3D printed parts, and everything else is super easy to get hold of. So it'll be cheaper, lighter, and. Uh, yeah, it's difficult though getting my head around designing in 3D. I'll say that because I often hmm. I'm quite hands-on. I'll do things on you know sketch an idea on paper and then just build it with the materials I have around. But when I'm actually constructing it on the computer first, I'm, I realize how far ahead I have to actually think uh, to make the whole thing as a whole work properly afterwards. And it's it's yeah, yeah it's taking a lot longer than I thought actually. It's uh, it's taking me by surprise. Yeah, there's something that's I used to talk about. The like, I have a simple thing. My camera's on a thing that's attached to my a thing with a thing. You know, I'm gonna say thing a lot, but most of this <laughs> doesn't matter. The important part is where it attaches to my my monitor stand. It's just a round 3D printed piece with a hole in the top. And I I always said I could go out in the garage and cut a dowel down to size, drill a hole in it, and stick it in there, and it would work. But then if I want another one, I have to go out in the garage, cut a dowel to size, and, you know, do it again. Whereas with this, I can send this to somebody and they can print it. And mm. yeah, it just works just, for them. It's mind they have the same monitor stand. Yeah, yeah. The We're living in the future. Magic. Living sure. in the future. Yeah. 